the impact of COVID-19 has uh, forced many uh, performing arts venue and uh, art organization to close down even permanently, not even temporarily. So um, you can talk about um, Sawanapum Performing Arts Theatre in Phnom Penh. They have been closed permanently. Luckily, at least the management has been integrated with the government as, uh, as advisors now. Then uh, hopefully they will re retry to present their work uh, later. And many or all of, uh, may, I would say almost all, of the performing art venues have been closed and uh, staff and artists are getting zero percent of income meaning they either lose their job permanently or they're on a suspension uh, uh, period meaning they don't get any pay at all but in the case of far we have thrived to keep almost everyone in payroll except some volunteer who volunteered to take suspension leave uh, at zero percent myself i have been taking 20 percent of my pay the rest of us have been taking 50 percent or less um, artists uh, we have revamped our pay, pay system to the artist uh, because we were very busy before artists only get performance fee when they get to perform but with covid we know that they don't get to perform so we create a, a base salary to allow them to survive and that also require them to still rehearse because that's very important and artist has taken this time to inspire other people we have a series of stay home stay fit uh, artists in action at home uh, series of videos on on our website and social medias and um, and within this time they have created two different shows two different versions of the same name because there are two main group of artists so the name of the show is far circus rising yeah. this is to present uh, why we continue to be resilient and 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 hopeful uh, and and joyful to be to be able to be on stage again at a later stage we have put in place um a safety measure and standard operating procedure for the new normal and um, and we have relaunched back our operations uh, from August by only performing two times a week uh, because as I said earlier we rely on international tourism without international tourism now the local market definitely does cannot sustain our daily performance and we take this opportunity to revamp our experience that we offer to the target market and we offer street food festival we offer um, uh, engagement and entertainment before the the act, the real perform the actual performance in the big top. So we do things on the outside. People can join us to uh, even put in artist costume and to take photograph. It's a selfie opportunity. We change our pricing system. Our partner come to our space to perform with us. Uh, for pre-show entertainment because our partner, our artistic organization don't have any other clients. So at least they get to perform. So for some people with far, on a daily average, we have been welcome about 60 to 100 guests per night on our Friday and Saturday show. So the program is Far Circus Rising with 10 performances. And, could, uh, and uh, we have put in place all the safety standard to comply with the government requirement. And we have been able to relaunch our operations from uh, August. Before I go to the status quo of, of the society today, um, first I want you to see how we started, which is the, the picture on top. And this is me sitting in the middle. This is how we started under the sky, under the rain, of course, for four months so i pray to buddha or allah or jesus or god every day that it doesn't rain uh, because uh, we don't have a roof over our head but that's how we started and then uh, we have the big top uh, four months after and a few years later we moved to our own land you can see the city the housing 
is a little bit further from our space, right? <laughs> but now the city has expanded. Um, but we exist here in uh, 5,000 square meter of land next to a big road. And last year, the money was good. We had an opportunity to purchase 10,000 square meter of land, the land right behind us. And we did because we didn't know that there will be COVID-19. And that the hope is that this space will become an, a, a cultural cluster of Siem Reap or even Cambodia. We hope that it, uh, it's not only about far, but it is a collection of many uh, artists um, and people can come to experience many different things all Cambodia. So because of COVID, uh, this plan will be delayed and it will, uh, we hope to uh, develop the land and, and the, the space and, and the vision. I mean, we already have the vision uh, to make this dream come true in at least four to five years time. And Tyrong knows very well. Um, uh, that's why I invited Tyrong uh, last year to Cambodia because I know Taiwan has a strong cultural governance uh, system and Cambodia has none of that. And we wanted to inspire people here to, 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 to anticipate and to advocate, to lobby for what we should have. So uh, context is because of the civil war, the long lasting civil war of the country, survival has been uh, the most priority uh, subject. So the people have lost the culture of going to theaters. The theaters themselves has been converted after the war to serve other purposes. They have not been used for cultural product. So the, the culture of going to theater and consuming and paying for live performances is only being started to reveal after 40 years of the war and after 25 years of the work at FAR and many other organizations. And no cultural funding and government governance system yet, though we have a cultural policy that has been new and is still being worked on. Uh, cultural actors rely on international development funds and agency related to culture, for example, UNESCO and other funders or business venture or entrepreneurs and international market to survive, to earn some income and to continue their work. If you uh, talk about status quo of performing art practitioners in Cambodia, we know that this is the labor of passion. Um, many of them even fund the project with their own money, with, uh, wherever they can find. Most are grassroots, uh, and most of the time they are in financial survival. Um, there are only a few financially sound and strong uh, cultural organization in Cambodia, which include FAR, Cambodian Living Arts. Um, that's all I can list. And we do rely on each other a lot. We collaborate with each other. We try to support each other as much as we can, though there has not been a organized association on all alliance or network in creative industry in Cambodia yet which I have volunteered to start. Uh, so we hope to get some financing and funding for us to get together to be a, uh, an advocate uh, to public uh, policy makers as well as all stakeholders about the, the protecting and advancing the interests of creative industry in Cambodia. Most of the time we rely on the ticket uh, sales income, which are still small. And of course, a sponsorship uh, and, and, and uh, cultural funding from international uh, agency. Uh, um, the, we need to lobby more on the importance of creative economy in our economic system, because today uh, we are hidden in different sectors, like we are linked to tourism or entertainment or services. We are not yet recognized as an important uh, economic contributor in the in the country and there are only two uh, recognized schools in of art in Cambodia or, or the Royal University of Fine Arts or I'm sorry I can I can say three which is a, one is a lower level school by the government called the 
Secondary School of Fine Arts here under the government, and then another is higher level, which is the next level from the Secondary School of Fine Art. It is called Royal University of Fine Art. Both of them are in Phnom Penh, and the other prominent school is Far Pundal Salapak, uh, which means Brightness of the Art. That's our mother NGO organization. Then um, we, the social enterprise, are in Siem Reap. You know already, and the uh, the prominent uh, organization in the arts are FAR, Pondi uh, Salapak, and FAR Social Enterprise, Cambodian Indian Arts, and Mekong Cultural Hub. You may know Mekong Cultural Hub a lot because they they have an office in Taiwan, in Taipei, and they do work a lot on uh, supporting, making sure that us, the cultural leader, are empowered. Uh, with many different skills, and do not leave the cultural sector altogether, because we know that it's very challenging to be in this sector. And in terms of venue and market, uh, as I said, the venues after the war have been converted to be to use for different purposes. Uh, so we don't have the system like in Taiwan where you have. Venues owned by the city government. You have the venue owned by the central government. You have uh, many different things. Uh, so here, uh, almost everything is private, um, and of course, it's very expensive. So there are not a lot. And in Batambong, we the, our school has a big top of two hundred fifty seat, four shows per week before COVID. Now they will relaunch one show per week uh, soon. And in Simbia, we have a big top of 450 seats. Um, now it's only weekend performances. And then there are a Chinese investment. Most of the time it's state investment thanks to One Belt, One Road initiative. So they are huge uh, spectacle light shows uh, meant for tourists. And for us in terms of market, uh, again, a, a part of the tour, uh, from the tourist, then the local market, most of the time they are free and community engagement to have rebuilding the culture of going to theater. And then the other source of revenue is international tours. So we have been touring around the world um, many times. The, the team, some performers are leaving next week to France. And could you share a little bit more how, because we know this is, still cases in different countries. How you manage to do that and how you decided to do that in wow. your company? Because I could imagine it would be a very long and very complicated process, like making a decision and doing all the administrative work. How did you manage to do that? Well, uh, thank you. This tool is a product of three years, three years of work. So for all our colleagues in the circus field, uh, Circa in Osh in France is a big platform, as, as you know. And we have been very fortunate to, to be able to pitch in one of the pitching sessions three years ago in Circa. That's how we, we pitched the new creation that we were planning to do, which is called White Goal. White Goal as, as in our culture, rights, because right is like gold, because we all eat rights. <laughs> in our culture, in Khmer culture. Uh, so, uh, I mean, this is not new. Uh, this has been planned for a very long time. We have worked so hard, we sell, we sold, and national theaters in France has been buying. Um, then suddenly COVID, and then on the last minute, the French embassy told us that Cambodia is not in the green list of allowed citizens to into the Schengen territory yet. So we were very devastated. Um, of course, for us and for the artists, because the artists were really looking forward to this experience. Um, and of course, it is a, it's a generation of income for the artists and for FAR. So we, we activated our support system. Uh, our friends lobbied for us a lot. The theaters will buy us also did, did their part uh, and we successfully lobbied the French government to allow us to get the visa. And so we actually get the visa on the very last minute 
and it was really stressful because our theater have they have to decide to cancel to to change the show it was uh, very difficult for all of us but uh, i guess again this is an example of resilience and thriving that we don't give up we um, we we have to fight until the last breath also it's linked to our finance today as i told you we are not earning money from the weekend shows at the moment that means we are burning the money that we have kept before at some point soon this money are running out so strategically our shareholders have been very kind to say that they will agree to restructure our share structure to allow us to welcome another strategic investor that will bring in cash to save us from 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 closure and also strategic meaning it's not only cash that will bring in they will also bring in technical expertise and market into our uh, ecosystem uh, so long answer to your short question dai rom and we are successful to get the visa because it's not only visa it's visa plus let's say passe because of our great friends in france and in cambodia who has lobby both in the U, in the embassy of france in cambodia and the ministry of interior and ministry of culture in france so we are very grateful to this strong support system that we have and this is a result of 25 years of relationship uh, between our school the social enterprise and friends uh, around the world and, and especially in france